I'm not sure which job was my best job. The one I'm doing now as a tutor of pre-medical students in the sciences, chemistry, physical biology, or as a sailing instructor for kids, eight to 10 years old. As a sailing instructor, the coolest thing in the world is to have an eight-year-old kid who feels like the boat is big and hard to control and impossible to deal with, sitting there at the helm, taking the rudder, taking the sheet that controls the sail, learning to control the boat, learning to come about, learning to tack. But when they first get on there, they don't think they can do it. And it's so easy to teach them, especially in big, just old-fashioned Cape Cod dory, slow, stable boats that are very forgiving. And what happens is in a very short while, this kid says, wow, I can do it. And it changes them. Now, they're going to grow into lots of changes when they realize what they can do. But this one is a fairly profound one. I mean, not earth-shakingly profound, but really rewarding for both the kid and for me who's teaching this kid, who the kid is now at the helm of the boat, and then I'm ahead of him up front toward the bow, helping him, along with uh, three other uh, kids who are going to take turns in the boat. That was a great job. I had it from the age of... Uh, 13 through 18, and I was in the boat with the kids, sometimes for two and a half hours, not just in the boat. We had a, a key, a small island about a mile offshore, and we would uh, sail up there and sometimes have a cookout, go through the island, collect things, come back, hang out in the sandbar. What a great job. And then when I became 19, I got promoted to sailing instructor. I was the youngest sailing instructor, and you know what? I hated it because I wasn't in the boat with the kids. I was in a nice, beautiful, fast Boston whaler. I was getting paid a lot more money and I had a lot less to really do. I was just supervising, watching, making sure people don't fuck up. And I hated it. And it was the last time I did that job because I couldn't go backwards to being with the kids. I've had that problem with tutoring too. When I started to tutor, I did it to raise money. I'd done a little tutoring before. Um, I had been a lifeguard and I had uh, been a swim instructor and stuff like that. And then I became a waiter and I made good money as a student. And that was an interesting experience because uh, I was dealing with a different class of people. Um, more, much more real world than kind of this highfalutin place because where I was guarding and all that was like pretty... Uh, good, uh, nice, ritzy uh, housing communities. But anyway, um, I started tutoring a little bit. And all my life, all my life, I have invented games. Uh, when it was raining at the camp and they didn't know what to do with the kids, they put me in a room with the kids and left. And instead of using any of the stuff that was regular games, I would invent games. And I had a natural sense for what was fun for a kid. And when I tutor people, I have a sense of what's fun. And I make it entertaining. And I... I it's part of me. Now, certainly I picked up certain techniques by watching different professors. I had some very good teachers, and I saw, wow, uh, I, organic chemistry is interesting to me. I've always liked it, but I'm more interested in this teaching technique that this person is using and this way of turning it into something fun and interesting. And some of the best teachers have that ability to do just that. But anyway, so I really wanted to invent games. That's what I've done all my life. Um, kids from the neighborhood would say, hey, invent a game. I'm going to want to play a regular game, and I would just come up with one. And, they would, and, it, and it, they would be age appropriate to whatever whoever was there, um, including now when I'm working with uh, uh, folks that are going to be in, like uh, between uh, 19 and 21 years old, roughly. Um, yes, or some people, I make crazy sounds when I move electrons, you know, ka-chung, ka-ching, ga-bang, ga -bang, bosco. Uh, for some people, I don't. They don't need that. But they'll fall asleep for some if I don't do that. And it's really quite interesting because you can incorporate that in to, to tutoring. And that I like. But anyway, I have been inventing games forever. Some of them like complex board games and all. So when I was in high school, I came up with this game. And it's really interesting. It had permutation patterns. That's different ways of ordering things. It had mirror images. It had chirality. That's handedness. And I hadn't taken organic chemistry yet. These were just all things that were interesting to me, which is really weird because that's what organic chemistry is. I have the brain of an organic chemist. What a curse. 
And so I thought, wow, this is the coolest thing. And so when I was a, um, a senior uh, taking physical chemistry two or three with a buddy of mine, I showed him the game. And he said, this is really cool. Let's show it to other people. And I said, no, it's just, you know, for me. I've been doing this all my life. I create games and throw them away. Just there's in a, sh in a drawer or something like that. Anyway, what happened was um, he convinced me that it was a really good idea based on some responses from other people. And then what we did is, we, uh, it was my idea to do it as a mail order first. So we made a run of 800 of these guys uh, right over here. And there you can see it, Labaron! And uh, on the back over here, it says, Labaron, over a whole mess of mazes. And I haven't read this in years. I just pulled this out. Uh, Labaron is a unique and challenging alternative to traditional board games that the board is a constantly changing maze. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, the idea with the game is you had a bunch of pieces like this, and the pieces are going to look like this, and on the back side, like this, they look like this. These are mirror images, two-dimensional mirror images, and I came with, up with a numbering system when you number these like this, one, two, three, four, and it turns out that is exactly how they number organic molecules, so that you always number them so that uh, these things over here, which would be substituents, get the lowest number. And it's the most logical way to do it. And hey, wow, smart guy. I did it that way. So by the time I was in college, I realized that my game was organic chemistry. But I thought organic chemistry is cool because I'm a chem major. My friend's a chem major. Ha! <laughs> and we showed it to people that were chem majors or physics majors, engineering students. Those were our friends. We were nerds. And they all thought it was really great. Here's a picture of how it looks. There you see it makes a big maze. There's a whole bunch of possibilities. And uh, here, see here it is. Here's the box again. And I'm going to open it now. It's probably going to spill out, but let's see if I can show it to you. Yeah, there it is. You see you got the tiles here. There's 28 of them right over here. And then Mark, my buddy, came up with this. This is brilliant. You see this over here? This is a nylon spacer. They use them to space circuit boards like this. Keep them from getting too hot. Okay. And uh, since they're made of nylon, you can dye them. And you can just buy them for dirt cheap and dye them with Ritz dye. And so we have the purple and we have the yellow. Up to four people can play. The green, yeah. And then finally the blue. And then uh, instructions are right in here. And I actually designed a uh, little holder just to show off. I'm proud of this. See, it comes in two pieces like this. And then you bend this piece over here. And this little thing pops out. And look at this, man. This is cool. The guy at the dye shop said, if you figure out how to do this on your own, you can save a lot of money. So I, I spent a while doing it. Being hypomanic, it was pretty fucking easy. Lots of energy. And look at this. It snaps in really cool. And see, this is where you put your tiles. You, you pull the tiles off this uh, little thing here. Uh, just like that. Hey, very cool. Okay, so uh, what happened with all this stuff? Well, it turned out we did pretty well. Uh, we were selling a mail order in Games Magazine and uh, we, uh, in the various other ways. We got them in a few stores, but they're principally designed uh, for mail order. And we even showed them to uh, somebody in the game industry. And that's when I realized that I'm going to run out of time to make this video. So I'll just kind of truncate it and say this. He looked at it and go, you're not going to sell a lot of these. And I hated him. But he was right. It turned out that we hadn't showed this game to many people. We just show them to a small subset where intellectuals, the professors loved it, science students loved it, but these are not pre-med science students, pre-meds are cool, nothing wrong with them, but we were showing them to science science students, people that want to become professional scientists, all five of them in the whole school at University of Miami. Anyway, we went to the Miami Beach Convention Center to sell more, and a buddy of mine, he was my roommate, um, he sold homes at Doral Country Club. And he said, told me a trick. He says, if uh, anyone says about the house, well, it's pretty pricey, you say, well, sir, it's, it's not for everyone. So when we got the, this game, Labron, over the Miami Beach Convention Center, uh, what happened was is that lots of people looked at it and they go, you have to think. And I remember once I sold, told the guy, well, sir, it's not for everyone. And he turned around and bought the game. He just gave me this money, handed it, stuck the money in my face. Uh, my uh, roommate was the best uh, uh, salesperson at Doral at the time. He taught me a few other tricks. But the bottom line was, it was a niche market. 
So we made some of the money back. But the thing is, is that I developed a tutoring empire. I figured out how to give reviews to fund all this. I spent $17,000 in a year and a half on a patent for the game, on manufacturing the game, on actually supporting my friend Mark and doing all this and supporting myself, only to find out that this game would never make a lot of money. Which, if I'd done my homework right, but I was just a kid in my early 20s, I would have realized. And it was a very, very painful thing. But I started to get, oh, $1,000 a review one night, $2,000 a review, sometimes $3,000 a review one night. And then I was making gobs of money at tutoring, but I hated it because it was like being in the motorboat. And now I'm doing what I love. I'm running out of time, so I'm pushing it. Just tutoring.